The new toolbar control in Power Apps has some key features that allow us to create a compact navigation component that requires very little screen space. It also allows us to communicate a great deal of information to the user in a way that is consistent with the other Microsoft products. The inspiration for this is the various navigation panes that are seen throughout the Microsoft 365 applications. Outlook and SharePoint, for example, both have icons with tooltips that clearly communicate to the user what is located in each section. This is a very efficient use of space, and in this video, we're going to be exploring how to use the modern toolbar control in Power Apps to recreate this. Timestamps are listed in the description of the video, so feel free to jump around to the parts that interest you using those. We'll start by looking at the toolbar control by itself. We can see that the buttons in the toolbar are created via the items property. Now each button can have various properties, such as an item key, a display name, an icon, some styling options, and in our case today, we're going to be using the tooltip. This tooltip is what will allow us to have a navigation component the size of a single icon, but we'll still be able to communicate what is located on each screen to the user. It's also important to note that we can add our own properties to this list of items so that our buttons can reference things like screens and values from a data source. The toolbar doesn't currently have a way to indicate which item is currently selected. So this is functionality that we will have to build into our component. The toolbar also has an on select property. And when a button is pressed, a switch statement is typically used to take action on a selected button in the control. In our case, we won't be using the toolbar exactly as intended. So the switch statement will not be needed in our component. Some of the styling options of the toolbar control include a padding option, which determines how much empty space there is around the control. Now the toolbar currently has a forced alignment to the top of the control. So regardless of the height of the toolbar, we can see that the buttons will always be pushed to the top of the control. Because of this, I typically avoid the flexible height option, and I like to align the height value for the control with the padding option so that I can center the control a little easier inside of containers. A cheat sheet for this is that if the padding is set to small, then the ideal height is 35. And if the padding is set to medium or large, then the ideal height is 44. Each of these will ensure that the height of the control has the buttons aligned in the center, and thus the whole control can be easier aligned inside of a container. Now these only apply to the horizontal alignment option, which we'll talk about next. So separate from what I was just talking about, where the buttons are kind of pushed to the top of the toolbar control, you can change the direction that the buttons are displayed using the alignment option. So if it's set to horizontal, they'll span out horizontally, as you can see. And if they're set to vertical, then they'll be displayed vertically. The rest of the styling options are very similar to the button control, so we'll go ahead and start to build our component. We'll first head to our components and we'll add a new component named Fluent2 Navigation Pane. While I'll be referring to this as the Fluent2 Navigation Pane, there is also a preview component for the Fluent2 React Nav Menu. Now this is a separate component which we may look at in the future. So please let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Inside of our component, we'll add a vertical container named container component. This will house our actual controls later on. We'll also set this component containers X and Y values to zero, the width to parent.width and the height to parent.height. We'll also go ahead and set the drop shadow to none and the border radius to zero as well. Before we insert any controls into our component, let's first set up a custom property for our component. The property will be called navigation items, and we'll set this as a data input of type table. This will be where we plug in our data to display our list of buttons. Now we need to insert a placeholder value for this property while we build our control. 
To do this, we'll go back to the screen where we inserted the toolbar control previously, and we'll copy the first item from the items property. We'll go back to our component, and we'll paste this in as the value of our navigation items. I'll just change some of the fields to button one to make them more general. We'll change the icons, and we'll also change the item appearance to transparent, and the item icon style to filled. As I mentioned earlier, we can also add our own fields to the toolbar that each button can then reference. We'll add a new field for item screen, and we'll just set this as screen one. You'll need to reference an actual screen that's in your app. What you type here and which screen you select doesn't really matter too much. We just need to give our component a template for what to expect for each button. Next, we'll start to format our component and insert our controls. For the width of our control, we'll go ahead and set this to 58, and then we'll insert a blank vertical gallery into our component container named Gal Navigation. The data source for this gallery will be our component's navigation items property, which houses all the buttons that we want to display. We'll set the container alignment for this gallery to stretch with a minimum width of zero, and we'll enable flexible height and change the minimum height to zero. After this, we also want to set the template padding to zero and the template size to 44. Inside our gallery, we'll insert a horizontal container called container navigation controls. This container will hold the toolbar control for our navigation. We'll go ahead and set the X and Y values to zero, and we'll set the width for this container to parent.template width and the height to parent.template height. We'll also go ahead and change the drop shadow to none and set the border radius to zero. Just a reminder, if you've been enjoying this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. The support on recent videos has been extremely high, and just know that that is greatly appreciated. Next, inside of our navigation controls container, we'll insert a toolbar control named TB Navigation. We'll need the padding of this toolbar to be set to small, and we want the layout to be icon only. We want the alignment in the container to be set to centered with a height of 35, and the flexible width property is going to be enabled with a minimum width of zero. We'll also set the font size to 24 to make our buttons a little bit bigger. You can adjust this as you see fit, and you'll have to adjust the width of the component to accommodate this. The items property of our navigation toolbar will just be set to this item. Since our gallery data source has all the information our toolbar needs to display buttons, we just need to provide the whole record to our toolbar control. For the on select property of our toolbar, we want to navigate to the screen associated with this button. We'll insert the navigation function referencing this item dot item screen. And like we looked at before, item screen is just a custom property that we've added to the buttons in our toolbar control. At this point, our component will work, but we want to indicate to the user which navigation item is currently selected. To do this, we'll add a container to the front of our toolbar container, and we'll call this container selected. We want the alignment of this container to be set to stretch with a minimum height of zero, and we'll set the width of this to two. The border radius will be zero, and we'll set the drop shadow of this container to none. Next, we'll go back to our onSelect property of the toolbar control, and in front of the navigate function, we'll set a variable called var selected navigation item. We want to store this item from the gallery. Now that this variable is created, we can head to our selected container again and set its color property based on whether the item is selected or not. If it is, we want to show the app's primary theme color. And if it's not, we want the indicator to be transparent. We'll use the following formula. If this item dot item key 
is equal to var selected navigation item dot item key. Then the color of this container should be app dot theme dot colors dot primary. And if not, set it to this transparent value. We do this instead of hard coding the color to the primary theme and setting the visible property of the container based on the selected item key. Because when the selected container is hidden and unhidden, it makes the toolbar move slightly to the left and right as it adjusts to the available width in the container. This can be distracting to the user. So this way, the width is always constant because this selected container is always visible. We're just choosing if the color is visible or not based on the item being selected. Now for the fun part, we'll go and insert this into our app. In this case, we have an app with three screens for checking in customers, showing the customers that are waiting, as well as checking out the customers. On the left-hand side of the app, you can see a container that I've created to house our navigation control. We'll go ahead and insert our control here. To populate the navigation items, I'm going to opt to use a named formula. This will make adding screens in the future very easy to populate across all the components that we've inserted into our app. First, we'll copy the placeholder navigation items from our component, and then we'll head to our named formulas. We'll call this NF screens and we'll insert our placeholder item. As we saw before, we have three screens in our app. So I'll copy this individual item three times. And now for each of these items, I can fill out the information for each screen. As you can see, I've given each of these items their own unique information. And most importantly, we can see that each one has an item icon that is unique to it, as well as a tooltip describing what you can do when you click this button. Our item screen property is pointing to the screen that is associated with this button. Now that we've created our table of buttons, we can go back to our control and replace the navigation items with our named formula. We'll also copy this component to our other two screens. One last thing we need to do is enable access app scope in our component properties. This will allow our components across different screens to access the variable that we're creating that is storing the selected navigation item. And that way all the components across the different screens will stay in sync with which item is selected. And now we can go ahead and play our app. You can see that when we hover over an item on the left-hand side, we get that helpful tooltip indicator to tell us what is actually on this page when we click on the button. And if I click on a button for the waitlist, for example, that takes us to the waitlist screen now. If I select the checkout button, now we are on the checkout screen. This doesn't necessarily have to be used for navigating screens in this case. Instead of having the navigate function in the onSelect property, you could instead only have the variable being set and you could display different information on the same screen based on the selected item variable. This would almost create a tab list functionality, but instead of a tab list based on text, it's based on icons. This type of navigation is also great on a mobile application where you're using very icon-based navigation. And since this is a very compact navigation system, it doesn't take up a whole lot of real estate on the person's screen. So there's a navigation system using the new toolbar control. If you're interested in a video on the Fluent2 nav menu preview component that I showed at the beginning of this video, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, also be sure to drop them down below. Have a great day.